I've had a cake come across my desk that would be perfect for you. He's eight. His mother, birth mother died when he was three. And we placed him with a couple that really weren't fit. The second couple we placed him with abandoned him. Oh my God. And I went for his annual follow-up and I found him living alone in the apartment. Alone? For almost a month, we think. Neighbours called once they started going door to door. Look, I like this kid, and I know we're not supposed to, but I do. He's resourceful, he's resilient. I'm not saying these things haven't affected him, they really have. He's guarded, he has sleep issues. Of course. But for all he's been through, he hasn't let it turn him into a victim, which is what made me think of now that you've been approved, I think you'll make a wonderful foster parent. My question for you is, are you ready? Take good care of it. Come on in. You don't have to take your shoes off. Shoes make floors dirty. I don't think I've ever said this before, but you have a beautiful home. Thank you. So yours, Cody. Nothing's off limits. It doesn't look that much, but I'd like you to decorate it. Really? Yes. We can go shopping. You can pick out whatever you like. Cody loves butterflies. Really? I love this room. Remember, it's just the first night. We're all in this together. You okay? I like your eyes. Thank you. They're really pretty. Let's get some sleep. Good night, Miss Hobson. Good night, Cody. Sleep tight. So, let's all say, welcome Cody. Welcome Cody. You can take that seat right over there. Alright, let's open those notebooks. Everyone ready? The first word is... Are you okay in there? I'm fine. Some kind of superhero thing. And what is this? Is this a cocoon or something? I feel Christmas. It keeps them safe till they're grown up. Wow, that's clever. So I was straightening it out for you earlier and I accidentally found some of your stimulants. Stimulants? 
things that keep you away. I don't like going to sleep. I know, but there's nothing to, for you to be scared of here. Yes, there is. What? The canker man. Who's that? He comes when I sleep. He eats people. Well, that's no good. He ate my mum. You know, when I was a little girl, I used to think there was a witch scratching at my window. But it was just the tree. The branches had grown a little too long. And they hit the window when the wind blew. Once I knew that, the witch never came back. Sometimes scary things go away when we understand them a little. Not the canker man. You're in your home now. I'm sure he can't find you. He's always with me, he says so. I saw something last night. I think it was Sean. I know we've had those dreams. I felt like we've seen our kids in the world, but this was different. I couldn't help but feel that it was because... Go ahead. He knows about Cody and he's angry with me. For replacing him? Yeah. We talked about something like this at the beginning when you wanted to sell the house, but you changed your mind because... I felt like he was still there. You said you saw him sometimes? Yes. Okay. The thing you need to understand about dreams, you can lose the dreams. It can feel very real while we having them. This wasn't a dream. I was awake. Doesn't matter. If we're suppressing negative emotions like guilt or fear, especially for sleep deprived on top of that, our subconsciousness will figure out a way to process these emotions, even if we're awake. We can even achieve levels of REM sleep whilst we're awake. It's called a waking dream. It's more common than you think. This felt very real. Yeah, I'm sure it did. But waking dreams, any dreams actually, are conversations that we're having with ourselves. Every character in your dream is actually just you. And when we're trying to bury uncomfortable emotions or ideas, or we feel threatened, sometimes the only outlet they have is our subconsciousness. It's normal for us to feel haunted by our past, by our losses, by the children we lost. But Jesse, no. Sean is not haunting your home. The question is, what are you trying to say to yourself? What unresolved emotions are struggling to get out? Ooh, that's nice. It's a monarch. Don't they have um stick things? Yeah, I guess. Hey, how are you doing? You alright? Who's that? Well, that was my son. His name was Sean. Where is he? Well, he's in heaven. That's where my mum is. Tell me. What was she like? I don't remember her. 
How did Sean go to heaven? I wish he hadn't. I'm guessing the same for your wife. He looks fun. I'm sorry. Why? Because of my dreams. What do you mean, Cody? What happens when you dream? I won't do it again. Please don't be mad. Honey, I'm not mad. I hope you have a good day, Jesse. You too. I wish I could have heard his voice. Okay, you're okay. Okay, that's one more round for you. Hey, Cody, you know yesterday you were asking about Sean. Do you want to see a video of him? Yes, please. When's the last time you had a real Christmas? I don't know. Well, you will be this year. <sighs> That's right, you didn't sleep well last night, did you? In this house, it's okay for you to relax. You're home. Now get some sleep. Did you hear it whistle? What is that? The Kankaman. Sometimes if I do this, it keeps in her way. Thirteen plus five. Hayden? Eighteen? Yes. Seven plus thirteen. Clara? Twenty? Nice. Nine plus fourteen. This time is fine, but if you're not feeling well for recess, maybe you should visit the nurse's room. Can I just stay here? I have to step out, just for a minute. Why not put your head down and rest? I'm fine. I didn't see very 
very much of you tonight. I'm sorry, I don't feel too well. Let's have a look at you. Worried about what happened at school today? Well, I think it's going to be okay. The little boy will turn up. I don't want to go to school. Sick, huh? Yes. Well, that's too bad. I guess you won't be interested in doing a little shopping today. Pick up some stuff, like some cool toys. I don't think I deserve to. If there's one thing I know, it's that you deserve a good day. Okay. Hey, let's go to the park first. There's one not far from here. What do you say? Okay. How long has any slept? At least two days. It's been going on since he first got home. I'm giving him Zolpidem. It's a pediatric ambient. Just a pill before bedtime should do the trick. It's just to get him started. You can't let him stay up for days on end. Sleep deprivation at this age can do real damage. Thank you. You got some real cool toys here. Do you feel any better? Not really. Okay, maybe you'll feel better after dinner. You can go play with your toys in your room. Okay. Hey, there he is. You look a little better. I feel a little better. Good, so the police frightened me earlier today. What for? Well, I think this little kid still hasn't shown back up. And they called it because, well, I guess they have to rule out abduction. I guess you saw the kid leave? And How are you sure why? What? I was just wondering. Hey, why don't you go set up the table? I'll be there in a minute, okay? Today was my favourite day so far. Yeah? Mine too. Hey, listen. Um, about the question you asked me. Earlier, Sean 
drowned. It was an accident. And then I found out that I couldn't have any more kids, so... I'm sorry I asked about that. No, no. It's... You had the right to know. It's just important that you also know that nothing like that is ever going to happen to you. Now, go get some sleep. Cody? <laughs> Cody! Cody! Wake up! Wake up! Wake up, honey! Wake up! Cody! 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 Come on, honey! Here, she's awake, she's awake. Natalie, you haven't returned my phone call. I've been at the police station all night. Where is he? That's not your concern right anymore. Why did you drug him? He needed sleep. His doctor prescribed it. I have to talk with Cody. That's not going to happen. I need to find out more about him. About his dreams. You've heard this before. There's several great support groups in here. And a few therapists that specialise in domestic violence. I want you to reach out. And then I never want to see you again. <laughs> Can I speak to Well and Young? Thank you. What can I do for you? I'm here to talk about Cody Morgan. It says here that you and your wife Katrina foster Cody f for 15 months before he was given to Peter and Doris Clements. They disappeared a year ago, much like your wife. What are we talking about here, miss? We're talking about what happened when he dreams. I've seen it too. You yeah, have no. It was chasing me, and it nearly killed me. I wouldn't say that around here. They fit you for slippers. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then I'm in wasting important time. You can only hear you're crazy for so long before you start to believe it. That little boy's dreams come true. Real. And true. It's an amazing, beautiful thing. So are his nightmares. It's here. Dangerous? Dr. Tennant told me not to come back without the patient file. He's tried to call. Do you have the PID? I don't. All I have is a last name and a date. There's a PE number here on the intake. How long do you keep those? If nobody claimed them, there's a chance they're still down there. Could you send me it? Thanks. A case of mine was just transferred. I need the name of the facility of the report. 
Natalie Fredman F R I E D M A N Provider number 11714 Cody Morgan Cody? This is for you. It's your mother's journal. Your mother's name was Andrea Morgan and I can tell by reading this she loved you very much. When you were a baby she noticed you were special. It was just the two of you. Against the world. She writes a lot about you and about your gift and how much she loved watching you grow. I don't think she stopped writing because she didn't want to. I think it's because she got sick, which just happens sometimes. These are some of your mother's test results. Do you see that word there? Cancer. Not quite. It's difficult to explain to children what cancer is. In terms they can understand, your mother started looking very different, very fast. And by the time she was in the intense care unit, they started looking for foster parents for you. But they would have brought you in to see her one last time, to say goodbye. Her voice would have been hard to hear, but I know she would have tried to say, if she could, the one thing she would never want you to forget. <laughs> Once you got older, you forget most of this, and you told people the canker ate your mummy, and as more time went by in your mind, the canker man ate my mummy. And your mind, Cody, your amazing, special, one-of-a-kind mind, made him real. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I used you like I did for Sean. But I'll never do it again, okay? Never. Here we go. Hey, close to me. There. Remember, there's nothing to worry about. I'm going to be here with you all night. Can you tell me a bedtime story? Sure. Once upon a time, there was a special little boy who needed a mum. And there was a sad mum who needed a son. Is this a happy story? I think it is. A happy ending anyway. It feels like they can't because there's people going away. No one ever really goes away. Not completely because they live in our minds and hearts. In this story, that nice lady who cares for the boy, she came back to her husband and they lived happily ever after. And all the people that the Kenka man killed come back to their family. Can them things happen? I 
guess that depends on you, Cody. You have an amazing gift. Who knows what can happen as it grows. Thanks for bringing me home, Mum. Oh. <sighs>